Hey guys, let's get to work. Uh, so, sorry, what I've got here, I've got the uh, funny playing, no, not the funny playing, excuse me, the um, one chip uh, DMG OSD kit here. This is the one with the menu, it uses the same LCD as that funny playing kit, but you can, you know, change all the colors independently. You can turn on the, uh, the pixel grid, shit like that. Uh, but anyway, I kind of half-assed this install because I knew I wasn't going to keep it in this shell. Um, well, I finally got the shell that I'm going to be putting it in. Uh, so what this shell is, this is a quote-unquote factory A DMG shell. Um, so a little bit of context, what that means is this is one of the higher quality aftermarket DMG shells. This isn't like this isn't Retro 6, is a prestige shell. Um, there are just several different varying levels of quality shells out there made by uh, different manufacturers and this is allegedly one of the more high quality options. So uh, we'll check it out. Uh, first thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that the uh, the uh, the text, the labels, it's straight. How interesting is that? I mean, it's not technically the right font. There's a little scratch there. Um, I mean, if I look for problems, I'll find them, but they are much more well disguised than some of the other shells that I've taken a look at here. But anyway, Go ahead and get this torn down and take a look at what we got here. Is this? Ooh, that's the wrong bit. There we go. Now we'll go ahead and save this shell because this is actually one of my nicer DMG shells. I have a lot of nice DMG shells, but I do have some. You'll have to excuse the absolute mess I've made on my hands here. Um, I was doing some quick and dirty painting. And, uh, well, it worked. <laughs> Finally started working on another project that I've had uh, in progress for quite some time now. So I'm gonna pull it off the side. And let's do the back first. Let's still see the dip. and four screws and this whole thing should lift right out of there nice. and we will drop it in here luckily this one already has some uh, battery terminals installed you can't say that with all the shells that you get so it is nice seeing that um, I kind of want to use my original buttons but I like the colors of the included ones better. So, bug it. Drop the power switch in there. Drop the DMG in there. I'll fix the link port cover in a moment. I am going to use my original screws though. They tend to work better.
We are threading this for the first time though, because this is a new shell. So they do go in a little bit more, uh, or a little bit less smoothly, first time at least. I never showed the text on the back, my bad, but there you go. That doesn't help at all, does it? Alright. Anyway. That's the back, all done. Well, almost all done. We will have to trim it for the uh, IPS here. But, um... The link port cover. And then I'll uh, carry on. I am going to loosen this a little bit because it looks like it's actually cantilevering the board up out of position. Alright. So the front part. Normally it would just be bippity boppity zoop at these screws and then uh, you know, swap it over. But because this is an IPS kit, we are going to have to do a little bit of trimming. I am going to go ahead and get this removed first, however. Screw post is broken. Set that aside. And I'll pull this out. And I'm not afraid of getting my fingers all over it because I left the uh, plastic on. I'm just going to set this aside for now, too. Then we need to get this out. I'm going to do that with a microfiber cloth. Just push it out from the inside. It was not stuck down very well. And we should be good to save that and reuse it. So I will do exactly that and just set it aside for a moment. And we should be all done with this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get my other knife here, this one. So this one has the fresh blade on it, and we're going to trim this just a little bit. Uh, since it's transparent and I can see through, I'm just going to be following these lines here, because we only need to take off a little bit. So I'm going to follow these lines, and that should be good enough. If you haven't seen my usual method, if you have a Dremel, by all means, use that. But this works too, and it's pretty easy. You just create a score mark like that. And I usually like to flip it around just to go backwards. And then just keep tracing your mark until it gets reasonably deep. And then we should be able to just snap the plastic off at this mark. Do be careful not to slip, because if you slip with the knife, you'll hit the edges and uh, we'll see that from uh, with the lens on. If you do, you know, slip and do something like that, I mean, it's not that big of a deal because the lens is going to cover that. That's probably deep enough, but before we break it off, I need to do all the sides here. Oops, slipped a little. It's quite alright though. It's tedious, but it's really not that bad. I've got paint coming off my fingers, I'm sure that's gonna 
make for an excellent build. side here. Slip there a little bit. You don't have to press super hard, but the harder you press, the uh, fewer times you'll have to do it. But at the same time, the easier it is to mess up. So, you know, it's better to do a bunch of light passes than a few heavy passes. Try it out. Sorry, I think I was doing that entirely out of frame. But, see I was just snapping off there. If we make our way around, in theory we should be able to remove it in one piece, but that's probably not gonna happen. I was wrong. One piece. I like dumb apples. Alright. Get that out of there. I like to go along these again to clear out any leftover pokey bits. Make sure we have a nice smooth surface. It's very easy to nick it with the pliers and uh, a little bit will stick up if you do that. Let's see. I am going to end up swapping out this bracket because I hate it. Look at how much it moves around in there. Unless I like stick the screen down to the bracket, I'm never going to have it perfectly centered. But let's just double check here. Do we actually need to do any more trimming? I was told we do, but it does not appear that we do. Look at that. All right. So like I said, I'm gonna swap out this bracket because I hate it. 
but also because, and Valder's gonna hate this, but I've got some of the new funny playing brackets here for the DMG. And this fits much better in this thing. Theoretically, there it goes. And this doesn't move around at all in this bracket. So if we drop that in here, which we do need to trim for, ooh, that is interesting, isn't it? Well, there's a difference between those two brackets. All right. Got a Dremel, you can go in there and smooth that out a little so you don't see anything through the lens. But I'm not too worried about it, it's not going to be that bad. Let me get this so I can get down in there. Now that that's in there, before I touch it with my nasty fingers, that with a little bit of canned air, lock that into place, and lock it down. Maybe. It's not quite fitting in there. There it goes. Ooh, one thing I just considered, this might not actually work. I don't know if there's enough slack on this ribbon. That would be very unfortunate. There is not enough slack on this ribbon. We can modify this bracket by removing this plastic piece, but that will require removing the bracket entirely, which really isn't too big of a deal. It's not like it's glued down or anything. Should have tried that first. Especially should have tried it before removing the uh, plastic. But here we are. All right. So it looks like I'm back to using this shitty old bracket. But in this case, I'm just going to tape it down with a little double-sided tape, stick it all the way in one corner. That should get it nice and straight. Because don't forget, we can reposition where this thing is, where the image is on the screen. The only thing we can't do is if it's not perfectly straight, you know, we're, we can't work around that. You cannot change the shape of the pixels, you can only move them. Use two little bits of 3M, quote unquote. Pretend those are double quotes. Um, that's just the stuff that usually comes stuck onto one of these lenses here. There's always that part in the middle that you can remove.
hopefully this never has to come off. I really don't think it will. The only real issue with this bracket is that the screen moves around and you have to stick it down. Could also just use shittier tape. Playing it safe. It's stuck down there. We didn't even have to remove those, but it's too late. Once they're gone, they're gone. Now that fits on there. I'm thinking I'm going to tape this down to the bracket as well. This thing apart. I'm gonna wonder what all this black stuff stuck to my uh, tape is. It's just paint coming off my hands. It's not on there real well. One trick to, uh, if you know you're gonna be getting paint on your hands, just apply lotion first. Moisturize. I'm going to try out the membranes that come with it. I know, but... Oh, I just lost that, so maybe not. Nope, oh, no, it's easy to get to. Okay. I found it. put in like 8 million screws. There we go, though. I learned something. I, I genuinely thought that funny playing bracket was going to work. I think it's designed to use the uh, ribbon underneath the bracket. And the cutout is designed specifically for that ribbon, for Valder's ribbon, and not um, the PCB that I was trying to shove in there. These buttons do not feel great. Hopefully they break in. I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine. But I also don't like that little bit of silk screen poking through underneath the start and select buttons. But that's okay. I'm 
pretty sure we need to trim that still. Yep. Don't forget to cut out the uh, little post here. It'd be so much easier if the uh, motherboard wasn't in there. Crops right off. And a little bit of the old knife action to get it nice and smooth. No white marks. Can't even tell it's not factory. And it also helps if you trim these capacitor leads on the motherboard itself, but I've already done that when I did the first install. And I think we're ready to button this thing up. So it's time to do my least favorite part. And then we can start putting in all the screws. I'm just going to get all of them started before I start cranking them down. There we go. Looking at this now, I'm thinking that is the wrong color lens for this. But at least we don't have to take it apart to swap that out. Hey look, it's that Pokemon Gold again. Excuse me, I'm, I'm looking at this straight on while I adjust this, so it's going to look off in the camera. Alright. That looks good to me. I'm not going to go downstairs, I don't want to have to talk to mummy dearest. All the buttons seem to work nicely, so that's a plus. Not that I expected something to stop working. Oh, I thought there was a potion in there. I guess not. I will say, one of the pros of this shell, right out of the gate, the A and B buttons aren't sticking, so that's nice. Unlike a certain prestige shell I tried out a little while ago. Yeah, you know, I'm actually I'm actually really happy with this. This is uh 
So far, this is one of the better aftermarket shells I've tried out for the DMG. Uh, yeah, it is a little bit of a bummer that it still needs the manual trimming for the IPS screens, but so be it. I mean, that's that's kind of where we're at. Um, no, no one is going to be happy with that until these IPS screens go away, basically. Because um, even... Even if it's not, or even if it is trimmed, uh, there's going to be someone who's like, oh man, I want, I really want to use this shell on my original backlit Game Boy, you know, not with a um, IPS screen, but with the original screen, but it's going to be trimmed, and then they're going to be missing screw posts, and you know, it's just, like I said, no, no one's going to be happy. One size all doesn't quite fit with uh, all these different mod options. Um, but, you know, it's not like it's that difficult to actually trim these things for these new IPS screens. It's much less difficult uh, tech speed fast. Thank you. Uh, it's much less difficult to trim for these newest IPS screens than it was for some of the older generation uh, RIPs or RIPS screens since all we had to trim was that bezel. That's it. I did remove those screw posts, but they didn't have to be removed. They only have to be removed for the funny playing version of this kit if you're using this bracket. Um, but, you know, the older one, you need to trim out that part too. And actually, I think that was it. So we're getting there. We're getting there. But yeah, this is actually really nice. So. Like usual, in the uh, description there, I will throw links to all the all the goods. Um, in this particular case, I will throw a link to this shell. I actually really like this color. I was afraid that I would dislike it when I got it in hand, but I don't know. I'm digging it. I've, I've always had a uh, soft spot for clear shells, especially this uh, smoke color. And... Um, I don't know. I'm I'm digging it. Uh, I've got nothing bad to say about it. It feels good. I bet with OEM buttons and OEM membranes, it would feel like an OEM Game Boy too. Um, I guess if I had to be particular, the battery cover could fit better, but I'm pretty sure that's just how battery covers fit on Game Boys. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. That's just me being particular and trying to find things that I dislike. Uh, I, I wish they would stop coming with uh, this stuff on there. I know it's super hard to see, but there is a Nintendo logo. Uh, plus these two logos, whatever these are. I don't actually know what logos those are. That TUV and then VCI or whatever it is. Um... But I'm sure this Nintendo logo is the one that, that gets them in trouble. And then, of course, right on the front, Nintendo Game Boy. I wish they would stop coming with these because it's just making it so much more difficult to get these types of shells. I know Retro Game Repair Shop... By the way, Retro Game Repair Shop was the ones who provided the shell. Uh, they, they, they sent me this shell to you know check out and play with. Um, I didn't pick this up out of pocket, but... I know Retro Game Repair Shop in particular has had problems with customs before and customs seizing things with Nintendo logos on them. I know Retro Modding in particular has also had quite a few customs issues in the past. Uh, for instance, if you're in the US and right now, at least at the time of filming this video, October 21st, if you go and try and buy a, an original Game Boy shell from Retro Modding, you won't. You, they, they won't let you. Uh, they have them all hidden for U.S.-based IPs, and you just you can't even see them on their website unless you're going to their website with a VPN. Um, I have heard stories of people who've checked out. You know, they've uh, added them to their cart and then tried purchasing them. Um, and apparently, retro modding does still ship if you do that, but. You know, your your mileage may vary. I'm certainly not recommending it. I'm just I'm just sharing what I've heard. But otherwise, 
I'm, I'm, I'm digging this show. You know what? I do have one complaint, but it's hardly fair because every single shell that I've tried so far has had this problem. These glass lenses just fit like shit. They're, the tolerances are too tight. Um, I suppose it's better than Game Boy Advance where they're all just like loosey-goosey and they're not even the right shape and it's just gnarly, yeah. But, I don't know, pick your poison. Would you rather have this this loose outline that vaguely resembles the lens? Oh man, I just dropped my spudger. There we go. You can fit that in that gap almost all the way around. Well, to the bottom and to the top at least. Um, or would you rather have these lenses that barely fit in there, you have to push them in there at an angle and sometimes they just pop out because it's the kind of day they're having. I don't know. I think I prefer the Game Boy Advance approach. One problem I am just now noticing, let me double check it's not because the screw is too loose. In the Game Boy at least. The uh, power port doesn't quite line up. I'm sure if I had an actual power cable and stuck it in there, it would uh, it would finagle around until it fit. And this port cover is crooked. But I can't get it off because I don't have any fingernails right now. Oh well. I'm never going to use the link port, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I'm... I'm happy with this thing. So anyway, before I ramble, because I think I've covered everything at this point. Um, again, thanks to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this shell to me to check out. And I suppose uh, for that last video for sending me this backlight kit to check out. Uh, but that that's, that's another video. Um, I'll go ahead and throw a link down in the description to where you can get these shells, uh, or you can check them out at least. Um, like usual, this isn't sponsored, mostly. Um, I'm not being paid to say any of this. This is my genuine opinion. Um, the links I put in the description, they're not affiliate links. I don't, I don't make money from YouTube. This is just a hobby for me. I have a day job. Um, so it, it genuinely does not affect me whether you, uh, you, you purchase from those links or whether you even click on them or look at them. I'm just I'm just doing this because I like sharing this store to stuff with you guys. So yeah. That's all I got. Thanks for watching guys. Have a fantastic night. Nope. Thought it was done. One more quick thing. I promise it's quick. I uh it's the whole reason I actually did this video tonight and I completely forgot. Um I'm using these uh Jugi uh, lithium ion 1.5 volt batteries in particular because um, they are the only batteries that I have that reliably work in a DMG. Um, DMGs have these really annoying recessed um, contacts that just happen to not work very well with nickel metal hydride batteries. So this will probably work just fine. Yeah. This works just fine, but I've never had a problem with these batteries. These are these are very proud batteries. Um, the batteries I normally have problems with are especially my salvaged cells here. Like these are out of just a battery pack. They don't have a very proud nubbin. They work perfectly fine in a Game Boy Advance and a Game Boy Color, but I just can't get them to work in a DMG and that is still the case here. I can spin it around all I want. It's j it just it doesn't make contact with that terminal. Uh, if we move that battery over so that we're just testing the terminals that came with the battery shell, it's the exact same thing. Nothing. Uh, now I'm not worried about mixing and matching batteries in this particular case because guess what? It's not even making contact. But, yeah, unfortunately, that's just the way it is, and uh, things will never be the same. Um, if I had some Lottas on hand, I would love to test them out, but it's 
it's not going to tell me anything that I don't already know. Um, these, sorry, I'm not even facing the camera. I'm, I'm off looking for my batteries, even though I already looked before this video. I don't know where the hell they are. They're probably in a Game Boy that I accidentally put away. Uh, but yeah, see, these work just fine. I didn't realize it was on. Um, that's unfortunately just how it is. You've got to use, you've got to find a set of batteries that works for you and these aftermarket shells do not improve on that. This is a problem that exists with the original Game Boy, not with aftermarket shells. It's just unfortunately aftermarket shells tended to copy that. But just for those naysayers who aren't believing me, works perfectly in that. It's it's just the shape of the battery. Doesn't work in Game Boys. And this shell isn't any better than OEM. So yeah, stick to uh, stick to your good old alkaline batteries or find yourself a set of rechargeables, four rechargeables, mine, not just two. Uh, like these Duracells that have an especially proud nub in there and won't have any problems. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic night.